In the 1880s, the city of Galveston, an island two miles off the Texas coast, considered building a seawall. But after its Weather Bureau chief termed the storm surge as an absurd delusion, it was not built. In 1900, Galveston was the third richest city in the U.S. The first Texas city to have telegraphs, telephones, electric powered houses, street lights, and trolleys. It had the only deep water seaport west of the Mississippi. The 1900 storm hit with a 16 foot surge, smashing the houses along the seafront into a moving wall of debris three miles long and two stories high. By dawn, the waters had gone and set all the communications to the mainland. The living dig through the debris, searching for survivors. Over 6,000 lay dead in 90 degree heat, must be disposed of. Following the 1900 storm, the citizens approved the issue of bonds to finance a seawall and to raise the city behind it. 44 foot long pilings were driven and topped with concrete to form the foundation. March 1903, concrete for the first section was poured, steam cranes taking the raw material to mixer and to site. It took one day to pour a section, a week later the first two sections would be dry. A frame was set between them and concrete poured to connect them. It went on day and night, weather permitting, and was completed in July 1904. Raising the island behind the wall was more complicated. Three men arrived with a solution. Lyndon Bates, who had invented a self-propelled dredge, proposed digging a canal, bringing in dredged sand from the bay, and at the same time, deepen the ship channel. The first dredge was the home designed to use its underwater cutter head to excavate the canal. Topsoil was taken to form levees to each side. As the dredge dug the canal, the dirt was placed behind the seawall to further strengthen it. Heavier dredges were used to remove large rocks in the canal's path. Houses along the canal path were jacked up and moved clear. The three mile long, 20 foot deep, 200 foot wide canal ran from the bay at 8th Street and Avenue A, then followed the seawall turning west at 22nd Street following Avenue P and a half to 33rd Street. Hopper dredges brought in a slurry of sand and seawater pumping it ashore through 42 inch pipes. White marks were placed throughout the city to show residents the height of the planned grade raising. Thousands of buildings were raised on stilts, fences were elevated, and large buildings were raised using jack screws. The island was raised in two to three block sections. The city paid for lifting the infrastructure and the residents paid for raising their own structures. Levees of dirt were placed around each section to be filled. Drainage ditches allowed the excess water to drain back to the bay. Streetcars continued running during the grade raising, their tracks raised prior to the filling. Plants were boxed and elevated, earthen levees built to protect trees and property from the salt water and sand. A pontoon bridge for pedestrians was built across the canal at 23rd Street for easy access to the revenue producing seafront. Wooden boardwalks were built above the slurry which allowed the residents to walk from the street to their houses and from one house to another as they contended with the smell, mosquitoes, and flies. The walkways were haphazardly placed requiring a creative path to reaching one's destination. After the fill dried, sand blew wildly from the slightest breeze. The salt water killed the vegetation, leaving the filled areas barren. Raising the city took nearly seven years. Built at its southern edge to seawall height, it sloped to the bay, requiring over 16 million cubic yards of sand. The Leviathan did the bulk of the work. She made over 7,400 trips carrying about 11 million cubic yards of fill. Galveston vied for commercial survival, competing with rivals Houston and Texas City while the seawall and grade raising projects took place. With rail connection to the mainland restored and by deepening the seaport, commercial activity surpassed pre-storm levels, attracting larger ships and more trade. By 1910, the city had been raised, the canal filled in, the houses returned to their original sites. A causeway connecting the island to the mainland was completed in 1912. In 1915, a hurricane more powerful than the 1900 storm struck Galveston. Damage was sustained, yet the seawall and grade raising projects proved to be a huge success. Eight lives were lost in the Galveston compared to over 6,000 who had a storm of 1900. 